Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock. Just happens to be when I feel like it. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Um, as you go through here, if you find if you enjoy this fine programming, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'll send you a my NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace, helicopter to your door, and signed by me. Would not be impressive. Okay. Um, my last video I did on the Luchich uh, meal thing in I got a little giddy. You might want to check it out if you haven't already. I, I don't know why you wouldn't have. Maybe I'll put the link on the bottom if I can figure out how to do that. I don't know why you wouldn't have watched it already. Maybe you were in, uh, you know, got hit over the head over the weekend or something. You know, I, I, I don't know. But I, I hope you haven't. I hope that didn't happen to you. I really do. Okay, we're going to talk about the Rangers now. The Rangers are pretty much all the buzz in the land right now. So I figure let's talk about the Rangers, shall we? Um, the big thing is they signed uh, Truba. A lot of people have been saying that they signed him for too much for $8 million a year. No, the guy is a Norse, going to be a Norse candidate for the next four or five years. I don't think they signed him for too much at all. They didn't want to screw around with him. Don't want to piss him off. Uh, they just got him from Winnipeg, where basically he was screwed over the whole time he was there. They tried to play him lower down the lineup to make his numbers look not so good. Call him a 5-6 and tried to pay him like that. Pissed him off. He, I think he did he actually miss games in the season holding out. I believe he did. And then the next time he came around, he said, Screw ya, not signing shit with you. And the, went to the Rangers, and the Rangers were like, Okay, we're not pissing you off. It's all good. Here, take the money. Okay, and at $8 million a year, it's going to look pretty damn good, uh, I would say, in the next couple of years. Now, the problem is, of course, they have uh, cap issues now. Here's the Rangers back to the cap issues again. Uh, after signing Panarin, which can't really blame them. I don't know if I would have personally, when you have Capo Capo coming on, but it's not a horrible move at all. If you can get a Panarin, you get a Panarin. I understand. Uh... But what's left you? What, what's left them with is you have guys like Vladislav Nemeshnikov, Nemeshnikov that doesn't look like he's going to fit. Didn't look like he's going to fit last year. He's making four million a year. Um, it, it probably go to a team like Ottawa that has lots of cap space and they can use him to get a second rounder if he has a good year. Uh, at the trade deadline, that's what I'm thinking. I wanted my Oilers to grab him. For one year of $4 million, see what he can do on the left wing with uh, um, with uh, Hopkins or, or whatever. He can play on right wing as well. Throw him on, on with McDavid. Doesn't look like they're going to do that after some of the moves they already did. So I'd say a team like Ottawa would probably be the best fit. I don't want to go too far into that because there's probably other teams that might fit him in. The main thing I want to talk about here is there's a lot of talk of... Uh, uh, maybe possibly trading Buchnevich. I don't really understand that unless Buchnevich is really uh, pricing himself out. Uh, Capo they, Capo Capo is going to be really good, but there's not much on the right side after that. Ryan Strom, as it is, is probably going to have to. They have um, here on Cap Friendly on the uh, on the. Uh, Depth charts. They have Ryan Str Elias Anderson playing up the middle and Ryan Strom playing, playing right side. I don't think so. I think Ryan Strom will play the middle. Uh, Elias Anderson and Vitaly Kravtsov will fight off for the fourth line spot. And Brad, they'll sign Brandon Lemieux and Brandon Lemieux will play up there. I think Brandon Lemieux is a freaking beautiful deal that they got. I think Winnipeg was crazy to get rid of him. Uh, he's got a lot of offensive upside. I love his game. Uh, he, he reminds me of his father in a lot of ways. And I think he's going to play on this lineup. Now, you could put Strom on the right side. And Elias, if you think he's ready. And maybe throw Lemieux on the left side on that line. But what happens here, what I'm saying is Pavel Buknevich, really they need him for that top line right now, I would say. He's a restricted free agent. They only have to sign him. You probably give him a bridge deal at three and a half, four million, or basically give him four million, whatever you were giving Vlad uh, Nemeshnikov. What happens here, though, is you're left with Chris Kreider. And Chris Kreider, Kreider, however you want to say it, 
Um, it's got to be re-signed uh, next year, I believe. And he's going to be expensive. And he's just not going to be able to fit in the cap. There's, there's no way that Chris Kreider... Is going to be able to fit in the Rangers cap in the next couple of years. It's not going to work. They got young guys coming up that are going to be able to take his spot anyways. Come on, New York Rangers, go. Okay, my thing just went freaking that shit crazy. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, here we go. So I think they're going to have to trade him. Now, who could they trade to? What kind of value are you going to get for Chris Kreider right now? I'd say pretty damn good. Um, the first thing that pops to everybody's mind, I think, would be uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets because they have so much uh, cap space. The problem is they really need a center more than anything. Um, their left wing is with uh, bringing in Nyquist, uh, Cam, having Cam Ack. Cam Atkinson, who can play on the left side. It's pretty tight. Uh, I don't think they really need an upgrade at that in that area. Um, if they did, they would have to trade somebody like Oliver Bjorkstrand back to you to fill in that left role, or a Marcus Nudavara, and I just can't see them going that route, honestly. Um, they're going to look for a center, and I think that's going to be their main focus. So I don't think they're going to want to put more cap space on the wings where that's the one area where they're pretty much set. So what's next? I would say the next team that I'd be looking at would be the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. This team, Anaheim has been sitting there in the weeds now for a while. Haven't really did much all year. Um, besides, of course, letting Perry go. Because they're and, and bringing in like Michael Delzato and uh, just kind of filling in their roster a little bit. They've got a lot of good young players coming up, and that's the reason why they're able to do this. Sam Steele, Max Jones, T T Troy Terry, a lot of really good. Andre Kasha, uh, uh, and then they have a guy named Nick Ritchie who they've been true who has been progressing. Not too bad, very slowly. Um, got 31 points last year in 60 games. But really, he projects to be a Creator. And Creator's only 28 years old. Nick Ritchie is 23. I think this would be a solid trade for both teams. Nick Ritchie and maybe a draft pick for Creator. It, it, Nick Ritchie's only... Pull him down 1.5 million. It would give you quite a bit of cap room this year, um, and ongoing. If, Creed, if if Nick Ritchie can improve on his 30 points or 40, 50 points or whatever, um, if not, he, he's a, he's a good second line option. Plus, you get a, maybe a second round pick out of the deal. Um, that frees up space for your play, for your uh, your future players and signing these young guys that you have right now. I think that would be one hell of a trade. The other thing is, if you're looking at defense, they have a guy named Josh Mahura, who they just may be able to let go. Um, it it, it kind of hurts their depth a bit, but if they really like Creeder and you really want a defenseman, Josh Mahura is a good offensive guy. He You won't have to pay him for a while. He's about 21, but he, he's still got a lot of work to do on the D side, but he's got a lot of potential. Um, I was going to get into the New Jersey Devils, but I'm running long. I'll, I'll do them really quick. The New Jersey Devils is another team that is a viable option, I would say. The only thing about the New Jersey Devils is um, they have to sign Hall, which isn't a problem. It's going to leave them some cap space. The only thing is that on the left side, if you're looking to replace the left side, defense is not an option. They don't have defensive prospects. They're too weak to be giving you up defense like Will Butcher or something like that. Um, in their depth chart on defense. So they're going to have to give you a left winger in return. I think that would have to be somebody like Blake Coleman, who isn't a bad option, but he's only a year younger, and he's not. he doesn't have as much upside as, say, um, a Richie does. Um, possibly Jesper Bratt, but I don't think they want to give up that kind of youth. Now, there is one guy. Here's one. Pavel Zaka. If you want space up the middle... He has been kind of struggling in their organization, was a first-round high pick, 
Um, put it together a little better last year. 12 goals and 13 assists. Had a big jump in the offense. Um, that is a good possibility. If they're willing to give up Pavel Zaka and maybe a pick or like a Mirko Mueller on defense to give you some defensive depth, that would be a tough choice between the two. Zaka is the center. Um, personally, for me, I'd go the Anaheim round and give Richie a try with the second or third round pick. That's my full 42%. That's all I have to give. I'm going way longer than I thought I would. I haven't even had a nap yet today, so I'm going for one. And uh, then later, we're going to go to Pilates at Chinky's House of Pilates. Ask for Poon if you go there, because I get free Pilates if you do that. Have a good day. Love you.